All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine at Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Rhonda Mincy, who is over in North Carolina. South Carolina. South Carolina. I knew I get that wrong. Yeah. <laughs> in South Carolina. How are you doing, Rhonda? Hi, I'm wonderful, John. How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm doing great. And... Uh, you know, and Rhonda is a speaker, strategist, author, and award-winning mentor, and she's chief inspiration, inspirational officer of great success, which combines inspiration with action, providing people with tools and techniques to grow personally and professionally, and author of the wonderful book, Unbridled Dreams, Change Your Mindset, Achieve Your Goals, and Live the Best Story of Your Life. And what we're going to talk about today is that how to live fearlessly and a fulfilled, how to live a fearless and fulfilled life. So let's dive straight into it, um, Rhonda. First of all, just give me give me a background to the book. Like, where did what, where did the idea or the genesis of that book come from? Oh, thank you for asking. Yeah, so the genesis of the book pretty much came from my desire to use my gift to really inspire other people to live fearlessly and to go after their heart's desire. I know oftentimes we fail to do that. And especially this past year with COVID and so much going on and, you know, it's just you know, taking the wind out of a lot of people's sails. So the question becomes, okay, what do I do? And these, the concepts in the book actually um, is a guide map for people to take strategic action in going after their heart's desires. So it's truly my gift to others. That's fantastic. And I love when um, you, you start off in the book about talking about getting unstuck. And I think that's great because I think sometimes, you know, people, you know, they, they get these, uh, you know, programs or books or whatever. And it's like, it's almost starts at the point of assuming that they know how to unstick themselves in the first place it's like move forward from here but I like that you yeah. started with with getting unstuck so tell me a little bit about that yeah you know um and you're so on point with that a lot of times it seems as though the books just kind of assume we already know we're already there we're at this level mm -hmm. but what I really like about the way that I wrote this book it, it truly starts at ground level so it helps us to gain clarity where we are and to to move forward, to get unstuck. And I know for me personally, this was a chapter that was dear to my heart because I felt stuck in so many places of my life and my career. And I had all of these talents and my question became, how do I actually move from here? Why am I stuck in this situation? And so that is why I started right there, ground level. First of all, let's get unstuck and then we can prepare to move forward. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that you can do to unstick yourself? Because I do think that that is that prevents a lot of people. And I think and I think obviously through the year or so that we've been through, uh, mm. there's a lot of people are probably mm. feeling more more stuck than ever and kind of overwhelmed and not really knowing how to unstick themselves. Yeah, you know, so the first thing I would think of is truly your mindset. Uh, again, yes, there are so many things that have come against us. But it begins in our mind and knowing that you are still here for a big purpose that's bigger than yourself. And so how do you shift? How do you overcome, you know, the, the fears and the self-doubts and the what ifs and the unknowns? And it truly begins with a change in your mindset, knowing that you're still here for a purpose and that you can accomplish what it is that you are here to actually accomplish. So making that shift. And now making the shift isn't always easy, right? Sometimes, right. you know, those, those um, voices of doubt still cloud in our thinking and old behaviors still, you know, cloud our thinking. So we have to actually move away from that. Yeah, because I think there's a, I, I had a statistic, I can't remember it now off the top of my head from psychology today about like 70% of our thoughts on a daily basis are negative. Oh my um, gosh. So those negative voices are, are there uh, that you have to, you have to be aware of them. Uh, and, and part of the getting unstuck because you're the, the chapter that follows it is about discovering yourself. So I think part of the getting stuck 
I assume is doing, you have to do some self-analysis, some self-discovery, uh, as you say, like going inside a little bit. And that that's something that seems really hard for people nowadays because the pervasive culture is to be distracted and to be external all the time and like all oh. these things coming in and all of that. So going inside seems almost counter culture, almost. Yeah, it does. And it's also scary, you know, because mm -hmm. who wants to spend time with themselves and find out something that they perhaps don't want to discover, right? <laughs> but you are so right, because before we can truly make that mindset shift, we have to do a self-analysis. We have to spend a long time. I never forget I was, you know, um, consulting with someone and I was helping her get unstuck. And she said, you know, Rhonda, just being still and listening to my own thoughts in my own head really helped me to gain clarity. And I think that is the case because yes, we're so busy reaching outward, but we have to pause. And it's okay, we have to give ourselves permission to just slow down, have a conversation with ourselves, find out exactly what it is that we want, find out exactly who we are. And then once we get that information, we can act on that. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, absolutely, 100%. And the other part is, like not just giving yourself permission, but make, as you said, making the time. And mm. and when people say like, well, I, I'm so busy, I'm so overwhelmed, I don't have time for this. I would, as I, as I, as I would always say is, okay, let's, let's take a step back and see, are you really, or are you, is there a lot of distractions? Is there a lot of things in there? You can find time to be with yourself. Maybe you're avoiding it. Maybe yes. this is the thing that you need to face up to the fact is that you're avoiding spending time with yourself. <laughs> yeah. And then the question becomes, why is that? <laughs> what are your afraid of what do you think you're going to find out you know but that is truly the key to getting free once you make the time right I said you know but yeah once you actually make the time and have that conversation that is when you want to track to to freedom yeah absolutely and then you say you say to dream big and set lofty mm. goals i mean and you know some people would say oh you know don't you don't, you don't, don't dream too big don't don't set set something like manageable and achievable but you say let's set lofty mm -hmm. goals like dream big i do i do because what happens when we dream small is that we expect small and that we limit ourselves to achieving our full potential and not only that to really impacting others on contrarily, when we dream big, that is when we can put the wheels in motion to have the best life for ourselves, but in addition to that, to really have massive impact. So I say that it takes the same amount of energy to dream big as it does to dream small. So why not be bold and really dream big and set lofty goals in line with those dreams so that you can truly live your best life. Yeah, and and let's face it. I mean, the every you know the journey towards a big goal or a small goal is still putting one foot in front of the other. So you still have to go on that journey. Yes, you still have to go on the journey. Absolutely. And so, why not take the steps to dream big? I know that it can be scary, and that's why a lot of us like to stay small, play it safe. But that is when we get the small rewards, no risk, no reward, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to just get out there and envision yourself, you know, doing those things that you probably thought you couldn't do or someone told you you couldn't do. And you will be surprised. I still amaze myself at the things that I accomplished because I stretch and I get out there and I, I do things in a big way. But if I have a small mindset, I really believe that I would not be serving in the capacity that I'm serving others in today. Yeah, no, I, I love that. Absolutely. And then and then you touched on it just a moment ago. I mean, it can be scary. So you talk about facing your fears. And it's funny, I mean, you said dreaming big and setting lofty goals and facing your fears comes after that. Yes. And you notice I put those steps in order, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I did. And that's why I think it's, it's, in, it's interesting because... It's like, you know, uh, dreaming big and setting lofty goals, and then it's facing your fears. So talk yes. to me a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, so here's the thing, you know, once you dream big, obviously, you there will be things that come your way that will intimidate you. And if you think about those things first, chances are you won't even dream big. So 
set your eyes on the prize, dream really big, set the lofty goals to achieve the big dream, and then prepare to face your fear because fear is going to come. You know, there's the fear, there are so many fears, as a matter of fact, fear of failure is one that I hear about so many times. Mine was fear of my own power because I knew that, okay, once I really get out there, oh my gosh, you know, what is gonna happen? You know, I started getting all these interviews, have to be on the big stage, travel, all these things that were I knew would push me out of my comfort zone. You know, so the fear of power, fear of the unknown, fear of change. And fear so, of success. Fear of success. Yes, yes, yes. You know, if you are uncomfortable with it or if you've not experienced it and if you don't know what comes in this new territory, it is frightening. It is. And so... You have to go in this prepared that I am going to confront all of these fears. There are not going to be an obstacle to prevent me from reaching my goals. I stood up to my fear. One of mine I mentioned in the book is the fear of public speaking. And to this day, it, I'm so glad that I did. Not only did I find my power in doing that, but I actually, you know, I got a standing ovation. And what that told me was that the people in the audience needed what I have. And so when we, you know, sell ourselves short and minimize our gifts and withhold them from the world, you know, sometimes we don't even think about it that way. Mm -hmm. But when we withhold them, then other people are missing out on them. So do it afraid and do it big. Yeah, I love that, Rhonda, because it's almost like uh, you have a duty to share your message. You have a duty. It's not even it's not even about you anymore. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if you saw me, I was just so resonating with that. <laughs> yes, yes. And yes, again, because we, we think that it's about us. You know, our comfort zone, our dream, our big mission, our goal. But, you know, really, it is to help other people. It is to truly use your gifts, your talents, whatever it is you you have to impart into someone else to, to make their lives better. You know, so, mm -hmm. you know, how do you use your gifts or your genius for, for profit as well as, you know, for, for prosperity yeah. as well as for purpose. So yeah. I totally um, agree with you there. Yes. I, and then you talk about managing your success. So that's, that's an interesting one because most people think, well, you know, success, once you're successful, like everything will take care of itself because life will be wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but again, you have to plan for that. I think everything is, is pretty strategic, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and some people who have become successful have not maintained their level of success because they've not planned for, for it and they don't know how to handle it or they only maintain a certain level, but they don't go any higher because again, they've not planned for that success. And one easy way that you can plan for it is to reach out to other people who have already been successful in that particular area. You know, have someone to mentor you and to be a role model for you so that you know how to handle the success when it comes and it doesn't go to your head or that you don't, you know, just spend your money frivolously, but how do you actually manage it well? Yeah, no, I, I understand. It's like, I mean, it's like in sports, you know, that uh, it's, uh, you know, a team can win the Super Bowl. It's really hard to come back and win it a second year, right? So, and I think that happens a lot with people. You know, you get initial success. Mm. But they don't realize that it's almost twice. You have to work twice as hard to maintain it. That's right. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And then the, the other one that fascinated me, just the last one we talk about, is the concept of reaching back. Now, you see, I am smiling on that one. <laughs> this is one of my favorite chapters, and it truly resonates with my heart because, again, I'm all about service, and I think that we can actually serve people through our business, whatever it is. And so reaching back is, is critical because it speaks to not only who we are, but um, our, our whole purpose here on this earth is to to be a steward over what we have, but also leave a legacy. And one way to do that is by giving back to others. I think, um, as a matter of fact, I know, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. And that is how I live my life. And therefore, the more that we gain, you know, whether it's monetarily or whatever measure of success we have, then it is incumbent upon us to pay it forward by giving back. 
you know, mm-hmm. and, and we can get back so many ways, you know, through, through teaching, through mentoring, you know, through role modeling, through scholarships, uh, there's just a myriad of ways that we can give back. And everything that I do within my business, I look at it from that vantage point. How am I paving the way to help someone else achieve their dreams or to achieve their goals or even to be a better person? Because at the end of the day, that's what matters more than the profit is truly impacting others' lives. Yeah, no, that's beautifully said, Rhonda, because I do think that, uh, you know, sometimes people forget about the the giving back piece. And I Mm -hmm. do think that in today's world, we need more role models because there's a lot of people out there shouting at everybody and telling them what they should or shouldn't be or whatever. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, who do we look to? We, we mm-hmm. look to role models. We look to how people actually comport themselves. That's what yes. really impacts us at the end of the day. So the more positive role models like yourself that are reaching back, I think that that can only benefit the world we live in. Oh, absolutely. I totally agree. I have people who I have looked up to and I've never gotten a chance to even meet. You know, many of them are, are mm-hmm. dead now. However, their, right. their words live on with me. And so and I embody, you know, what it is that they did with their lives. And I hope to do the same for other people to continue to pass that torch on to inspire others to do the exact same thing. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And just to remind everybody, the book is called Unbridled Dreams. Uh, Change your mindset, achieve your goals and live the best story of your life. Yes. Um, this this book will be uh, a link to the book will be under the video a link to all of the information about Rhonda will be under the video but before we go Rhonda please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do yeah so obviously I'm an author but I'm also the giver of hope which means that my main purpose is to help other people elevate and one way that I do that is through giving back to others I'm the inspirational officer at great success and this is where we help people create products that help them not only make a profit, but also leave a legacy. Yeah, I think it's wonderful, Rhonda. This has been a fantastic interview. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you.